Thank you. This will come to order the Committee on Regulatory Oversight and Reform. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Hicks. Here. Anderson. Here. Washington. Here. Bailey. Here. Berenger. Present. House. O'Donnell. Okay, we have a quorum. All right. Well, the reason we are here today is to discuss the relationship between CPS, which is Columbia Public Schools, and the catapult learning with uh, representatives from each organization. Unfortunately, though, the letter that I had sent out was answered with a comment of this was not given to us in enough time, which it was given to them in more than 24 hours. So unfortunately, CPS will not be here this evening. They did notify me. I spoke with their attorney and they will not be here this evening. That does not stop what we are here to do today, though. We're here to discuss the situation and it's unfortunate we're only going to hear one side. If I have to, I will send another letter and we may have another hearing. But for right now, we're going to take control of the matter we have at hand. We're going to listen to the witnesses we have. Now, with, 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 the, with, with the witness testimony, I ask that you please fill out a witness form. At the bottom of that witness form, you will see a spot for your signature. Please sign that spot before you testify and turn in your application on the front desk. Committee members, remember we are here for informational purposes. So let's please keep our questions direct and to the point and keep them on subject matter. I do not want to go off into the weeds. If, if we go off into the weeds, I will try to control this and bring us back in. Audience, I will give you enough time as you need for the witnesses to speak. I unfortunately only have one side here today, so you're going to have more, more time than needed. But in doing so, I please ask that you too be respectful of the committee members' questions. Some of them may be a little harsh at times, but I will make sure they are respectful to you. Please tell everything you can within the truth and the best knowledge that you have. This is a very serious matter, and I'm going to take this matter very seriously. So please, the information that you bring forward must be truthful. With that, I'd like to go ahead and turn the microphone over to Representative Dottie Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My opening remarks are a little bit long, so bear with me, but I want to um, kind of tell you where um, we've come from since December. So uh, I will begin. Thank you, committee members, guests, and members of the press for joining us this evening. I asked for this hearing of the Special Committee on Regulatory Oversight and Reform to learn more about the programs operated by Special Education Services, SESI Mo, otherwise known as Catapult, or Core Focus, as well as how it operates at Columbia Public Schools' core building. And let me be very clear up front, we are here tonight because the parents who want nothing less than a safe, nurturing educational environment for their kids are worried that such an environment does not exist in the core building. Over the last few months, what I thought would be a simple inquiry into some of the issues at the core building have evolved into a quest for the truth that has been far too elusive. It started in December of, of last year when I, when I was at the very last, when the parents were at the very last stop and I was that last stop. They were upset because they were dealing with what they felt was very improper treatment toward their kiddos and their kiddos with disabilities. These parents were frustrated that IEPs were not being fulfilled. IEPs are individual education plans for kiddos with disabilities. And their kiddos were not getting the mandated free and appropriate education, otherwise known as FAPE, under the federal law of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which is also known as IDEA. And some of them were getting hurt. As a legislator, a concerned citizen, and a mom, I felt their pain and I made a commitment to them to get the answers they deserve. My sincere hope tonight was that, my sincere hope that was tonight would be that it would be a night to get, finally get answers to many of these questions that the parents have. But instead, we have again run into roadblocks that have been consistently thrown up by the Club, Columbia Public Schools and Catapult Learning, as we have just only per, per, pursued the truth. At every uh, turn, they have stymied our efforts to uncover the facts, and by refusing to appear here tonight, they have again made it clear they have something to hide. I am disappointed beyond words that CPS continues to ignore the concerns of these parents and the needs of their children. Even though CPS District and Catapult again have again refused to participate in an important conversation, I think it's critical that we not be dissuaded from our efforts to seek the truth. In the time we have tonight, 
I want to talk about the issue in some detail for the benefit of those in attendance who aren't familiar, as familiar with these parents and their children that I've been dealing with. CORE is a small school in the CPS district attended by CPS students with disabilities who have been, de been determined by their IEP team to be placed there in order to receive intensive and therapeutic in interventions to teach calming and regu regulation strategies. This placement is away from their neighborhood school building. In previous years, CORE has been served by CPS teachers. Last spring, Col Columbia Public Schools entered into a contract with SESIMO, or otherwise known as Cat Catapult, to provide the focus program at CPS core building for the 2019-2020 school year for kindergarten through sixth grade, for kindergarten through sixth grade. This program would provide the educational classes and behavioral intervention for students in the elementary grades at core, in core. I was trying to help the mother gain access to her, her son's student records. In what would be the first of many uncooperative actions taken by the school district, the mother told the mother was told she had to sunshine her, her child's own records. Columbia Public School, School refused to allow this parent to review her own, uh, own child's restraint video. I too sunshined CPS January 14th for the videos and other accompanying documents um, regarding this incident and emails as well. I had the mother sign a release to let me review, but was told to review the videos, but was told by Dr. Stapleman, the superintendent, that I would have to watch them with him in a room. I did view them with him, and then I asked for the other documents I had originally requested through my Sunshine request. On February 21st, our house attorney received a letter from Dr. Stiepelman's attorney saying, I would need a subpoena for those records. Under the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, otherwise known as FERPA, this federal law permits the disclosure of personal identifiable information from education records to third parties under certain conditions. I fit in those uh, certain conditions, and they are a parent of the child may sign a written waiver authorizing disclosure to a child's third party. Number two, records contained in the personal identifiable information may be disclosed to a state educational authority as a part of an audit or evaluation of any federal or state-supported education system. The Committee on Elementary and Secondary Education, where I serve as vice chairman, it's an oversight role or otherwise or other legislative function and I would be such an educational authority. The sheer disregard for parental rights, the Sunshine Law, the federal and the federal law is, is brazen and foolish. I do not work for CPS. I work for taxpayers and parents who want accountability, and so do we. Working with groups like Mo Disability Empowerment, Race Matters, the ACLU, and other advocates, I've gone to great lengths to find out what is actually going on at CORE, but we have been stopped, lied to, and treated as it's none of our business by the leadership of both Catapult and CPS. As I mentioned moments ago, we invited the superintendent, Dr. Stiepelman, special ed director for CPS, Elise Montes, president of the Columbia School Board, Helen Wade, and record keeper and communication director, Michelle Baumstark, Baumstark to come participate in this discussion. We also invited the director of Catapult, Erin O'Neill, and the program director, Jess Miller. All those parties declined, to, declined our notice to appear. Catapult even lowered up and said this case was closed and we didn't give them 24 hour notice. We gave them over 48 hours notice. And keep in mind, and also keep in mind, I have reviewed the contract between CPS and Catapult. In their own contract with CPS, it states that they would agree to attend in any due process hearing or other investigation. This is such a hearing. There are so many red flags that have popped up during the past few months under this investigation. At every single turn, they have, they have worked to stymie, stymie any progress. Just to name a few of those red, red flags, I have a couple more. So bear with me, I just wanna go over these. <clears throat> I found out that Catapult was in, was performing an illegal body search of students when they came in school and their bags. And mind you, these are kindergarten through fifth grade kids having an illegal body search, which is clearly a Fourth Amendment violation. In CPS's own policy under the JGF, it states, student property may be searched based on re reasonable, suspicious of a, a violation of district rules, policy, or law. Reasonable suspicion must be based on facts known to the administration, credible information, Reasonable inference drawn from such facts or information. These students didn't fall under those, that policy, that it, which is CPS's. This begs the question over and over, who, is, who has oversight of this building? 
Under FAPE and IDEA, it states the school district does have oversight and are responsible to deliver FAPE, free and appropriate education for kiddos with disability, even with a private entity that is receiving public funds. However, on January 15th in the Kansas City Star, the district spokeswoman stated, that's not really happening, seclusion, in any Columbia school, public school, blaming the district for what happens at the Center of Responsive Education Core. She said it would be like blaming the Kansas City Star for something that happened in, in a part of the Star's building that we just happened to be leasing to an outfit we really have nothing to do with. CPS and have, Catapult have a $2.1 million contract to take care of our, of our that district's most vulnerable kiddos. To say that we that they have nothing to do with that outrag that outfit is outrageous and unlawful. Another very concerning red flag that popped up during the investigation is the very seri serious questions about the qualifications of the specialists at Catapult who are working with these kids. Are these specialists from Cap Catapult really actually certified in, in their state? I find out about two. Missouri is a state that requires it requires you to hold a professional license and apply behavior analysis in order to practice using your board certification. Neither the director of Catapult, Aaron O'Neill, nor uh, program director, Jess Miller, came up in the search as being certified. Parents were not allowed to know the names of these teachers at Catapult as they were only referred to as Miss K, Miss C, and so on. Why couldn't they know their teachers' names? Is it because they weren't actually certified to teach? We're still trying to find that out. The lack of transparency about the teachers at Catapult is very concerning. This begs the question, were the proper FBI checks done? Sadly, we, we still don't know. As we sit here tonight, we have so many questions uh, re that remain un unanswered. We have frustrated parents who have been repeatedly ignored as they have sought the truth. We have innocent kids with disability who deserve compassionate care, but instead have seen the quality of their care compromised. And we have a school district that refuses to be transparent or accountable or to abide by any state or federal law. We have a social contract where the citizens submit to the government the authority that requires them to send their children to public schools. But part of this responsibility of the government to ensure that our is to ensure that our public schools protect children, the rights of parents, and the civil liberties of everyone under their charge. From the evidence that I have seen, in the disregard for everyone involved, they have failed the responsibility and the taxpayer accountability. I stand with these parents and these kiddos, and we will not rest until we have answers. We will not stop we, until we can be absolutely certain that every child has a kind of support, nurturing education, and experience they deserve. I strongly urge both Columbia Public Schools and Catapult Learning to step out of the shadows and pull back the cloak and answer our questions. Help us shine the light of truth on what appears to be a very dark stain on this uh, Missouri district. With that, I close, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Bailey. Okay, as you heard, there's a lot to take in. And that's, <laughs> that being said, as you can see, there's a lot of questions probably to be had in there. And unfortunately, like I said earlier, CPS is not here. So we, as a committee, are gonna need to keep some of our questions, I guess, to ourselves. Because the questions that we have for CPS, I'm not sure we would have a witness here to answer today. If we do, feel free to ask those questions. Representative Bailey, is there, is there anything from the committee at this point forward? Would anyone like to make a comment or say anything after what you just heard? And if we could text him, I'd like to see if he can come in. Representative Bailey, I, I understand that there are some witnesses here that would like to say something. So, uh, Ms. Jolly, if you would come forward, please. And grab one of those witness forms and, oh, you already did. Again, all I ask is that we, we be respectful of each other. And you do have the witness form filled out. I thank you for that. You may, you may proceed. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. So um, let's just start out pretty simple. Um, your name, um, where you're employed, and how long you've worked there. It's pretty basic stuff for right now. I'm Angela Jolly, and I work for Columbia Public Schools. And I been with the program uh, quest for 11 years. Okay. Um, can you, you want, can you speak up too? <laughs> Sorry. It's hard to hear up here. Angela Jolly and I work for Columbia Public Schools as a learning specialist and I've worked with the quest programs for 11 years. Okay. That was Columbia, Columbia School Districts? 
Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm hard of hearing. If you need to, you can pull that microphone closer. And make sure it is on. Is the green button on? Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. I'm okay. sorry. It's okay, thank you. We're all hard of hearing. <laughs> okay. Um, so maybe you can um, explain the difference for us between core quest and core focus. There's a lot of acronyms flying around, so if you would help shed some light there. So core is the building, and then and within core, there's quest programs, which we used to have um, all the K-12 kiddos in the building. Um, focus, as of August, at the beginning of the school year, um, they have the other wing in our building, K-5, and I believe a comp skills class. And um, we have another program upstairs that's called Connections. Okay. Okay, so on September 9th, 2019, Dr. Steepleman stated at the board meeting that he held a circle with the staff at CoreQuest to review your needs for the program last year. Were you present at that meeting? I was. Okay. Did, did you express any concerns for the Quest program? I did. We were each given an opportunity to share some of our biggest concerns, and my concern, um, as, as some of my colleagues as well, our classroom sizes were getting so large, um, we were needing more support so that we could support the kids as um, they deserve to be supported. And so we were asking for help. Um, we were wanting more staff so that we could adequately work with our children. Okay. Were you told at that time what the reason um, was for CPS to contract with Catapult to take over the K-5 program? Not at that time. Um, Elise Monsi spoke with us in January of last year, I believe it was last year. Okay. Um, so at the beginning of the 19, um, 2020 school year, you were essentially regulated to one side of the core building, the CPS side, and, the, and, and worked with uh, students that were K through 12. And so did you have students prior that you that you had been working with, and this is several questions in together, so I apologize, I can repeat. Um, do you had kiddos that you had worked with and then you just up, up and had to leave those kiddos? Yes, um, the kiddos that were K through five on the elementary end, um, we lost those students because they weren't in the fifth grade and they stayed on the elementary wing and then were part of focus work. Okay, as I'm very familiar with the IEP process, was the IEP process for the the transfer um, of everything that was going on in your estimation? Do you think it was done properly? Meaning parental notification. Um, talking with the kids because for kids with autism, as you know, it, it's difficult for them to when something changes. Do you think that was done properly? No, I do not. Can you give me an example? I, um, I guess in layman's terms, like uh, what you would do usually in some kind of transfer in an IEP, and then what actually happened. As the students' IEPs were coming up that were towards the end of the year, as well as the students that their IEPs had already gone by, but they weren't ready for their annual IEP, um, I do believe, to my knowledge, those were not all held with the change from Quest to Focus. And we had asked several times how we should inform the parents, and we were told we should not inform the parents. Okay, so with an IEP, I know there are very strict rules, and um, if, if notifications aren't sent out to parents and, and that kind of thing, it, it is, it's very, very difficult um, to know what's going on. Um, so it, that, that, that's shocking to me, um, and especially you know, with, with kids that you deal with, it, you know, having a transfer time is, is always important. So you share a common entrance of the, build, of, of the, the building, correct? Yes, ma'am. Do you come in to the main lobby? Yes, ma'am. Okay. As you started off the school year around um, August 15, 2019, did you notice anything different? And yes, what can you tell me about it being different? The first day, um, we all were a little bit concerned because our kiddos uh, were not aware that there was changes. And so we were excited to see our students. And as the students came through the door, um, They were greeted with shoes off, backpacks open, shoes off, backpacks open, not a hello, and they were wanted. That's one thing that was very different. They were what? They were used a wand. Wanted, yeah. To search. Yes. They were wanted. 
Go on, just that's a metal detector. But you're telling me when the children first arrived, first thing they did was take their shoes off, take their backpacks off, and warn them. Yes, sir. Reasoning? We weren't informed of that. So shoes off, backpacks open, wand. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, um, and these again are K through five. So that's five years old to uh, 11, around 11. Age, yes, or years old. Yes, and then there's older students that were in a community skills room that were a little bit older than that. Did anybody at that time question um, any of the leadership of about these illegal searches? That you know of. Dr. Stiebelman uh, makes a point to be in all the buildings for a few minutes uh, the first day of school and so he was there and saw that and that didn't happen again the next day. We were not wanted any service in front of everybody. Okay. Um, did it happen the searches happen again after that day? Yes, ma'am. Um, and when did they finally stop? Approximately. That I'm unsure of. I remember seeing the wand up front um, several times, just accidentally left behind. Um, I know that the searches aren't happening at the front door anymore. I saw them a few times happen in the hallway, and I'm unaware after that if they were elsewhere or they stopped. Okay. Around January uh, 13th, 12th or 13th, I had the director. Uh, just for everybody's information, I had the director of catapult learning in my office, and I asked him, I said, is it a policy of your company, catapult learning, to search, illegally search these kiddos when they come in the door? His answer was yes. I informed him that's a Fourth Amendment violation, and his response was, well, these kids, you know, and I said, what, they have IEPs? And he said, well, we're a private company. I said, no, you're a private company with public funds. And you don't leave your, even kiddos, K through five, you don't leave your constitutional rights at the door. Um, and nothing was said of it again. Um, but apparently to them, that was okay. But we'll move on from there. Um, yes. Um, can we have another question from one of the committee members, if we can just... Thanks. Um, uh, to inquire, Mr. Chairman. You may inquire. Hi, Ms. Jolly, and thank you for being here. Um, I, I want to a little bit protect us as state reps in the language that we're using, so I want to get some clarity. Okay. Um, a representative ba uh, Bailey has referred to some illegal searches. Can you tell me exactly what was searched and how was that performed? The first student that I saw come through the door, a previous student of mine, um, they were asked to take their shoes off, so the shoes were set to the side and asked to open their backpacks and looked in, inside of the backpacks. Was that before or after they were wand? I'm not 100% sure. I, I'm leaning towards it was after the search, but I, I can say 100%. And so just so we can kind of be clear on language because I don't want Catapult to have any liability, any reason to sue any of us up here or you for language. Um, so when we say illegal searches, we have to be careful because we could actually be giving them a reason to sue us because that's a legal term. So when you say they, who is they? The staff members from Focus um, that were up front. And are they staff members from CPS or Catapult? From Catapult. Okay. And when they wanted the student, because um, you, you said you don't know if they opened the backpack before or after? I, I just don't remember. Okay. Did they find anything, any metal of any kind when they did that, or did you see what they took out of the backpack? I have not seen anything metal taken out of their backpack. Okay. Did you see, so just kind of go through the the steps for us, I won't interrupt you, just kind of tell me exactly when the student came in, they took their shoes off, put them to the side, and then go from there. So after they put the shoes to the side, and again, I don't remember if they were wanted first, but the statement was, shoes off, backpack open. Shoes as each child came through. And then what happened? 
They they also the metal detector was used on the front and the back of the child's body. Okay. And when they went in the backpack, did they take anything out of the backpack? I did not see that occur. Okay. Well, did you stay there for the whole time, or you just happened to? I mean, that would have shocked me too. So, did you just that kind of shocked you, and you went on about your way, or? I stayed because I wanted to say hello to our kids that we used to serve um, at Quest. Okay, so when they opened the backpack, did, did you see them actually take anything out? That's what I'm trying to get at. No, ma'am, I did not see anything. They just told them to open it, and did they look into the backpack? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and they did that on each child as they went through? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does CPS have any metal detectors at any of their schools? Not that I'm aware of. We don't at Quest. At, does CPS, the school district, have any? Do they not no longer have them at Hickman High? I'm not aware of what other what other buildings have. I've never seen one, but I, I don't. I've never seen one. Okay. And did this practice go on before Calipol became a contractor in the core building? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Um, what exactly are we looking for as soon as a student walks in the building and we tell them to take their shoes and backpack off or open their backpack up? I'm unaware of the policy and why they're doing that. So this, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is a child that is just getting there. He just got out of the car, mom, dad, whoever's dropping him off has done nothing except come in. Yes, sir. And they're being searched. Yes, sir. Does this happen every day to every student? The day that I was up front, it happened to every student on the first day of school as they walked into the door. Is this still currently happening now? If it is, it's not in the public area up front. I do not know. Thank you. So, as I referenced in my opening statement, um, CPS's policy <coughs> is that they have to have several criteria, criteria for a search. That's my understanding. Okay. I just want to make that clear. And from what I understand, the first day of school, the search was done. I'm not seeing any criteria. So we'll just put that out there for these searches. So on the search here, I have a question from our vice chair. You may proceed. Thank you. I, I just wanted to clar clarify this kind of where she was going. So this was not a procedure that had been done prior to um, catapult taking over the searching and the shoes off. This was completely a new procedure. Yes, ma'am. And, and you said that it was questioned the first day? Yes. Um, Dr. Stiefelman, that's one of his things. He likes to come to all of the schools for five minutes on the first day, and he seems visibly upset, and that did not happen anymore after the first day of school at the very front of the building in front of everybody. So do you know if other parents were aware of this on the first day, the kids taking their shoes off and the search being in the wand being used on the children? I'm, un, I'm unaware if they were informed. Some of the students that I have the year before seems very taken aback. So it wasn't something that they were used to no. doing when they entered the building. And so you said that when a super, it was a superintendent, you said? Yes, ma'am. And he seemed kind of alarmed. And then the, at the next day, um, it wasn't being done as they first entered the school. That is correct. They, but they were continuing to do it in other areas? Yes, ma'am. Um, was this an everyday procedure, or was it just... You know, a hit and miss kind of thing. No hit and miss. It was every day. But did they do it in the same area? The next time that I saw it um, occur was in the hallway of the elementary wing of the core building. So it wasn't directly at the front, but still other. So was it still as they were coming in? It just wasn't in the very entrance. So every child was still being put through this procedure. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions from any other member at this moment? No, and, ju and just for the record here, this is an infor informal hearing, and I am hard of hearing, so if you need my attention, please feel free to raise your hand or just, Mr. Chairman, it works. I'll, I'll be glad to. Hey, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I'll be glad to recognize you. You may continue, Representative Bailey. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so we're going to move on from that topic. Um, 
Let me move to some other things. Um, did you witness the timeout seclusion rooms uh, being used in the unfinished state of the core building? Yes, ma'am. Um, were they used prior to the date of the inspection um, pass, which I believe was October 11th or 12th? Yes, ma'am, they were used from the very first day of school. And the first day of school was August 15th or 16th, somewhere around there. Very close to that, yes. So we have kiddos going into um, an un uninspected um, seclusion room. Okay, so um, you witnessed the rooms being used for either timeout or seclusion before they passed um, this inspection, just to be clear. Yes, ma'am, and the date um, I looked up, it was the sixth, or excuse me, the 15th. Okay. All right. Did you witness any other rooms being used for seclusion? Yes, ma'am. Can you describe those rooms, please? And, and um, kind of give us a, um, point out the difference between the, the seclusion rooms that were built in, the, in these other rooms. The two seclusion rooms that were built um, were in the previous principal's office, um, so it's directly behind the front desk area. Um, there were two box-like structures. You want me to describe the inside of them? Yes, and, and when, as you describe them, um, did they ever change appearance from beginning to, I guess, present day? They, they did. Okay. So the first day of school, there were two boxes. Um, the inside had un unfinished wood. There were nails that were hammered into the wood that had splinters that were sticking out. Um, where the panels of wood would come together, they weren't all the way together, so it wasn't exactly smooth. Um, floor is concrete. Um, the current status of them, I believe it was the 23rd of August. The 23rd, um, contractors arrived and they put a white structure that might look like um, a shower wall um, on the inside of those boxes. And then there was a room 10, and inside that room is a closet. Um, that room was utilized from day one, um, putting children in the closet. Was there any windows, or, or how, how are the, the children's were just put in an emptied out closet? And I have pictures um, of these rooms, and these rooms have the urine stains on them, and um, it looks like a, a filthy like dog had been in there. Um, when you say closet, I'm sorry to interrupt, but when you, it's just not sitting well for me. When you say a closet, it would be a closet like I'm finding in my home, a small linen closet or a closet that I hang jackets or something. It is inside a room that they're utilizing as a cell, basically. Yes, the closet from the previous years had shelving in it where we kept um, materials for the students. Those shelving was removed. Um, the door that closed, um, the locking system is different from um, the two main seclusion rooms, and there was uh, a rectangular window and concrete floor. Okay, and now we are talking something that was done in the past. This is not currently still being used? It is not currently still being used. Thank you. Um, when, go ahead. Representative Washington, you may inquire. Can I inquire? Uh, I'm sorry, but the closet thing is kind of disturbing me. What is the age of the school, of the building? And let me tell you why I'm asking. I'm 52, and my elementary school had a, what we call a cloakroom. So I'm trying to get a visual of the size of, cause of this closet, like Representative Hicks said, which would be very small, which is what it, in modern, Actually, the modern classrooms don't have a closet at all. Um, but to try to see like what this is, like as a little kid, I went in the back and I hung my jacket um, in the cloakroom. I've seen that, but that doesn't tell me um, exactly how big it is without the dimensions. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know the actual um, dimensions of it. Um, Let me. Have, what, what was the closet used before? What, was, what were they using it for before? Um, it had shelvings in it. It had um, some of the games that our social workers use, teachers use, and so it was full of games on shelving that was attached to the wall. So, like, two grown folks couldn't walk up and down the closet at the same time together, right? Or could they? They could fit side by side, but the, the distance of it isn't very long. Okay, and you said it has a door on it? There's a regular door like the rest of the doors that go to the classroom, and there's a key that we all use if we needed to get into that Okay, because that would be different from my elementary school. The cloakroom doesn't have a door on it, although we had that punishment stuff back then. We probably needed a door. Um, and so... What do they use the closet? What were they using? Well, I'm sorry. First, let's step back. You said they no longer do it. When did this pro procedure stop that they put the children in the closet? One moment, please. On no, or excuse me, on September 4th, um, on September 4th, there were students in that closet with the door shut, and there was... Oh, this year? Yeah. Last year. I mean, last year, but I mean, current, I mean... Yeah, this school year, yes, sir. When did this con This contract just started this school year, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, the last time that I saw for sure that it was being used was September 4th, and that particular day... Um, there were individuals that came for a tour of the building. And just prior to that tour, the door was removed um, and taken off of the closet. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Um, I had a question. Had you ever seen a seclusion room like this before? The closet? Yes. Did they let you know that they were preparing this room as a seclusion room? Did they give you any kind of um, heads up that this is what this is what how we're going to use this or how? I'm just kind of concerned about where the why they thought this was a good idea. And did they let the teachers know? Did they let the parents know? The teachers were taking the students into the, into the closet. Was this a normal, you know, standard part of your job? I've never seen anything like that, and I've been with the district for 12, 13 years now. How did they prepare you to tell you that this is what you were supposed to do? I mean, why, why, why would you take a kid to this seclusion room? We... We, we were not prepared for that the first day. We as this happened on the first day? Yes. We were not prepared for that. Um, we did have Jess Miller come and speak to us. She's the, she, I believe she's the program director there for Focus. And this was in September, September 5th, the day after the tour, came and spoke to us a little bit about their philosophies at Focus and discuss with us when seclusion rooms can be used. And she explained to us they should only be used if the child is a safety risk to themselves and to others. And that's not what was happening. How many of these rooms did you have? There are two seclusion rooms that are directly behind the secretary's desk as you come through the door. And the closet in room 10 was being utilized. So there's three that I saw firsthand. So all the teachers were aware that this was the new procedure? From watching the different teachers on the focus side, it was not a secret. It was... Do you know if the parents were notified about this seclusion room? About the closets or the closets? I, I, yes. I, well, I didn't know if, uh, if you're referring to the other ones. Um, so there's there's closets and seclusion rooms. There's two seclusion rooms um, that were built that have different locking mechanisms on the outside, and then 
the the closet in room ten had a had a regular lock that we would use with a key. But okay, they, take, take it back. How 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 many rooms total were there that they were using for seclusion? seclusion whether it was a closet or a room. Three that I was aware of. Three, and then how many were considered? You would consider a closet that was a closet. One and one. Ten. How big were the other two rooms? As a guessing person, maybe four by seven. Okay, still not very big. And how long did they utilize? And was this like a standard practice for catapult? Yes, ma'am. And how long did, did you guys use these rooms? How long did catapult use them? Yes. The two seclusion rooms that are in the front of the building, it's my understanding that when we came back from winter break, the doors had been removed, so I believe that was January 6th. And the closet in room 10 stopped being utilized after the evening that there was a tour and the door was removed. How long was a child left in these rooms? Room 10's closet, um, on the first day there was a student that was in and out for over an hour. How long, what was the, was that an, an average time or were they in there for longer periods? And were they by themselves? There was staff that were on the outside of the door. Um, it was very hard for all of us at Quest. Um, this is not the policies and procedures we were used to. Um, so I wasn't up there all day to see or to hear, but lots of crying and begging to get out of the box. Um, the kids were not prepared for it. Thank you. I, I know that, the, that they have said they've changed policies and practice, and I know we have to be careful in what we say. As a teacher, I mean, you are currently employed by CPS, correct? Yes, sir. Are you a mother? Yes, sir. Did they, when, okay, this evidently had to be a new program rolled out, correct? I mean, from everything we've gathered, it's a new program that's rolled out. Now, did they ever bring the teachers in and explain what's going on, inform you, educate you, give you pro procedures and protocols to follow, or any of this? In regards to the focus? Prior to you seeing these rooms used? No, sir. So when they started using these rooms, in the, have you ever had to use one yourself? No, sir. Okay. Why? Well, I must, let's just say I'm the student and I'm coming in. Why would I be put to one of them rooms? I have two parts to that answer. Um, Jess Hi. Miller explained to us that they're only used for a student, you being unsafe or unsafe, or to yourself or to someone else. However, what I witnessed, um, students were put in for non compliance, sit down strikes. One student on the first day just had his finger like this in a teacher's face, but was not being unsafe. That's the same child that was in and out for over an hour. Um, so we were explained how they could be used, but they were utilized in a different way. Are they being used constantly? They were being used constantly. They were. They're not using them anymore, they're just not using them as often now. I hear the students in the seclusion rooms yelling and crying, but I did not witness the student in there. You could hear them in there. So when you're at the As a teacher, and someone dealing in this, I mean, I'm just a parent, but I see the crying and the mental health side of things in this enclosed room, whether it has a door or not. I mean, it, as a teacher, do you feel that we're doing our, our, our students and children justice by doing this? No, sir. There are other ways to discipline and handle the situation, correct? Yes, sir. We do it in our own homes with our own children. Yes, sir. And some even do it without discipline. Yes, sir. Okay. 
One more question on this room. The closet thing still does not sit well with me, even though I know they're not utilizing it anymore. If I was to stand up in the center of the closet, I am six foot tall, and put my arms out, which is a six foot one arm span, could I turn totally around in this closet without hitting a single wall? I don't believe so. Thank you. Representative Bailey, are there any other, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Representative Washington, you've been waiting patiently. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'm just trying to get some clarification on, so the building, the core building, is this just students who are um, developmentally disabled? Everyone in the building has an IEP, an individual education plan, and their kiddos, before focus came in, kiddos that were not able to be safe enough in their regular home schools in the classrooms, um, IEPs would be held to discuss um, a more restricted environment in their home schools. Okay, so can you give us an idea, because I'm from Kansas City, and, and um, growing up, there was a school, a high school across the street from the high school my sisters and brothers went to that had developmentally disabled students. We shut that down because we felt it was better to incorporate those students into school, regular school, not to set them out for the psychological issues that happen when you are separated. So we don't have a one school for students with IEP. I'm not a teacher, but I also understand that IEPs can run a gamut from physical developmentally disabled persons to other issues that are behavioral. So can you give us a rundown of the types of students that are there, what types of IEPs, and the ages, and then who is actually uh, being punished with this closet and seclusion room punishment? So the types of students um, we had um, at Quest um, originally, our students um, at Quest Core, are they all the same building? Um, Core is the building, and Quest is the program that I've worked at. We had K through 12, and now... All in one building? Yes, ma'am. In, so in 2020? We had approximately 60 students that were in the core building when we were all Quest. But they go from K through 12? When it was just Quest, yes ma'am. Okay. You can go ahead and finish, I'm sorry. Um, the individuals we served um, had a variety of disabilities. Um, from PTSD to other health impaired, um, mental illness, individuals with mental illness um, are in our school too that we work with. So there is lots of different um, disabilities as students came with. What is the qualifications of the people that are in, that are teaching these kids or, or these kids? Are you guys special ed teachers with special certifications? The Quest staff, I can speak to that. I'm not sure for the focus side. We are learning specialists that are certified um, to work in the districts. Okay, you can be certified to work in the district. I'm asking specifically what your what the certifications are of the people, and then the people that are from Catapult. Do you know what they are? I don't. I didn't know say that I'm right, but I think you get what I'm saying. I don't know the certification status of the Catapults, but those of us that are teachers in the Quest program, we're all certified to work as teachers. Are you special ed certified? Yes, been certified, I apologize. Okay, and then the eight, who, what, because some of us have been told that only sixth grade, not that it makes it better, but only sixth grade and up are being punished in these closets, but your testimony today seems like even smaller children, so I'm trying to see, um, were you ever in a room, like who decides if they go to this seclusion type punishment? The individual teachers and staff that are in the classrooms with the students. Are, are you not in, the, you weren't in a class? Or, I'm sorry, could you ask the question? Or what was your position there? I know you're a learning specialist. Are you in the classroom and then like, you have you have a co-partner, a co-teacher, and then she's sending this kid to, to the seclusion room? Or? I never sent a student to No, I, I get that you didn't. I'm saying like, but who's doing it? Any of the staff on the focus side can make that decision for a student to go in. 
And the focus, are, are they all Catapult employees? Yes, cat, Catapult Learning, they're making the decision when they feel a student needs to be in the So when you guys came to this building, did you also come under the supervision of Catapult? No, ma'am. Okay, so you are in a different program, but all in the same building? We, I, that's where I just think, for those of us who don't know, we're just trying to get some clarity first. So Quest um, has- well, What does that stand for again, I'm sorry? Um, or what is it? Um, we're, we're an alternative, or we're a, a program within the Columbia Public School District. Okay, and is it just for special needs students? The, all the students are on IEPs, yes. Okay. Are, do you have just expelled kids in this building too? No. Okay. Everybody has an IEP? Yes. But they're not necessarily the same type of IEP? No, and, and many of the kids, um, as I mentioned, it's it, the safety issues in the regular schools. Decisions were made from the IEPs. But you have some autistic kids. We do have kiddos with autism. We don't have that classroom anymore. Catapult Learning took that took over that classroom as well. Because I guess one of my biggest concerns is I definitely understand why Representative Bailey is involved in this. But for me, I, I have a stepdaughter that's on the spectrum, and I have a nephew on the spectrum, and they shouldn't be in a building with kids that have different types of IEPs. If you have a behavior IEP for, for PTSD or something like that, you may not need to be around there, and I, I'm trying to get an understanding of what kids you have and how you have them separated into different classrooms, because if, like, if they were in a foster home or, or something like that, those kids may not be able to be in the same house, so I'm trying to see what, how these kids are separated out before we get to the uh, what appears to be um, what's being described as um, cruel and unusual punishment. Um, I'm trying to see who do you have um, with you know you can have behavioral issues. I'm African American, obviously African American boys are often put on IEPs and may not need to be. So I'm trying to see who it is that you have at this school, because I'm going to be honest with you. It disturbs me that you have this school. Totally. And it disturbs me that you would separate out children um, because they were born with a disability. Um, and, and, I'm, I'm not, and I know that's not your, your thing. To be a special ed teacher, you got a big old heart and a whole, a whole lot, that, a lot of compassion that we don't have. But now that you have this school, I'm trying to see who's in this school, especially you got K through 12 in the school, and how are they broken up? Let me let me clear this up and, and shed some light. I don't want I don't want to be disrespectful. I do want to hear from the okay, teacher though. But I, you want to explain the I difference just say, if of you who answer you the, work for? Answer the question. I know that was a kind of a, a, a drawn out question, but I think I understand where she's trying to get to. If you could just answer the question. I think it's right. two schools in one is kind of. I understand that. That's what no. And that's my point yeah. is that you have more than one school in one building. Yeah. So my point is who's in the school and how they broke up. Currently, we have. Um, quest that I work for, and we're mainly on the left left wing of the school. Catapult Learning came in this past August, and they're mainly on the right side of the school. And what kind of kids are at Quest or students? I'm sorry. We have sixth through twelfth grade. Um, again, kiddos that are being successful in their classrooms um, due to their behaviors and safety. Is this a permanent placement? Are they if they get to oh, so or can they get to a point where they go back to a regular classroom? Yes, ma'am. Our goal is to always get our students back to their home school, um, and it's all based on how they're progressing and um, able to transition better, whether whatever their struggles are, their safety in the classroom. And so our goal is to get students from Quest back to their home schools. Um, a lot of times we'll set up in the IEP meetings. Um, we want to be able to go three to four weeks and watch the progress that we're wanting to see. And then our goal is to slowly add time to overwhelm the students, but to, to reintegrate into their homeschools that they came from. And as they are, be, are gaining those skills and becoming more successful, then more time is added. So we. Okay, so now that I don't have a problem with you separating the kids out of school for that. Now tell us kind of about this catapult thing. 
people, folks, company. Um, why they're there? No, who, who, what types of students are there? The students that were in the Quest program last year, if you weren't in sixth grade, those students were left, I call it left behind. Um, the students that were already going into sixth grade, they moved on down to the Quest side. If you K through fourth grade, um, I call them the unlucky ones, they were stuck on that side. And so they were the same type of behavioral issues, just younger kids. Is this catapult, is they just doing the K through the five and then the quest is doing the six through the 12? There's the K through five and then there's um, a room for kids with autism that's also within the catapult. Okay, system. so the autism students are not with the other students? On the quest side? On either side. We have, we have some kiddos on the quest side that have autism, but we don't have one room for all of the students with autism on the quest side. Okay, thank you. So Representative Bailey. Um, so thank you for clearing that up. There's the quest side, which is the CPS side. Correct, and that's who you work for. Yes. And then there's the catapult side, which is catapult. And they, they are the ones that were before the photos were leaked and then they had to stop, they were the ones putting the kiddos in seclusion rooms. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I do want to make that clear. Once photos were leaked, that's the only reason they stopped. These, these catapult, uh, are they teachers that are brought in? Employees of catapult, I guess? We were told they were the teachers. From the okay, so they're certified. I mean, you're a special ed teacher, and you were certified by the state to be a special ed teacher. So are these teachers they're bringing in from the catapult program these are missouri certified special ed teachers that i'm unaware if they're certified in my opening statements the program director and the um, director at the moment <coughs> when we checked last they were not aba certified and we're trying to figure out we've been trying for several for a while trying to figure out if the other staff but it's very hard to get their names from CPS, they won't give us the name, so it's hard to check on their certifications, just, just so everyone knows. Um, so let's let's move on. Are you a mandated reporter? Yes, ma'am. Okay, have, have you attempted to report your concerns to the uh, uh, Division of Family Services? I didn't. Um, when you are making a report, um, through the computer system, if you don't have proper information, child's age, where they live, last names, it doesn't allow you to go on to the next portion of that. And because you weren't directly working with those kids, you weren't able to make those reports. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so, with with the um, photos that were leaked. Um, I don't know if you were around the administrators, but do you know what their reaction was when the photos were leaked to the press? Was August, September, September ish? Oh, uh, the ones in our book, I believe. Yeah. Um, no, so the, the the two photos that were leaked were of the new seclusion rooms at Catapult, right? Yes, ma'am. Not the closets. Okay. So you haven't seen those, but. Um, we have not seen the new rooms, is what you're saying? Uh, I have. I have, in my initial press conference in December, I blew those um, up to poster size. I have them. I have them in my office. Okay, can you explain real fast to the committee what they may look like right now, compared to what I've seen here? Because I need to know if there's a difference between the current room and this just bare walled closet room looking thing. So, I mean, the reason I'm asking is this because I see a mental, I see a mental side to this. I think we are doing more harm to these students. I'm going to have to agree with uh, <laughs> Representative Washington on this. I'm a little disturbed that we have this program set up. I mean, I understand the program. We probably need the program. I'm just a little distraught on how it's set up and how it's working and being run. These, these newer rooms, I mean, are there pictures in them? Is there a place for them to sit down? The pictures I have of these old rooms, there's not even a place to sit down. I mean, we can go right now to a corrections facility and there's at least a restroom and a metal thing to sit on. And I'm not even seeing a place where a child can sit, lay down, do anything in this room except stand there are or no sit seats. on the cold floor. 
That is correct, sir. There are no seats. There are no pictures. There are no color. In current rooms right now? Yes, sir. Can I go, can I go back a little bit? I just want to go back, and, and, and we're almost finished. I know there's a couple other questions, but I want to go back. Um, so where did the kids with autism um, on the, the core focus side, where did they come from? Which is the catapult side? I'm not 100% sure. It was my understanding some of them came over from the standalone catapults high road. <laughs> And I'm not sure if they were brought in from other schools within the district. Okay. Because obviously those were sort of the new kiddos. And that's a max of 36 kids? Or somewhere around? I believe so. Uh, and, okay. then, and then we had a classroom that had several kiddos with autism that remained as the core building in the catapults program. Okay. Um, well, is there anything? I think you had a question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I, I'm sorry, but committee members, I mean, again, I know there's a lot of, she has a lot to say here. If you want to interrupt, do so, please, yeah. okay? We're not in a standard forum here. If you have something to say, I need you to just speak up or, or get the representative's attention. I'm okay with the open house. I mean, okay. we're all friends here, as I like to say, okay? As long as we keep within a quorum and we're not interrupting and over-talking each other, I'm okay with us speaking freely. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm at a huge disadvantage, so I'm going to start right there because was not part of the committee that heard all the bills. Um, I also know nothing about the Columbia Public Schools. I, I know nothing about any of this. And this booklet here with all this information was handed to me 10 minutes before this committee hearing. The only thing I do have, so I'm, that's why I'm clarifying, is that I actually had three moms come into my office today and spent a full 30 minutes with me who's child is in this. So that was the adva advantage, but now I'm more confused because the information they gave me versus what I'm hearing here are not matching. And so um, I just want to clarify, it could be Representative Bailey that does it as well. They told me that the elementary, you know, under sixth grade was still run by CPS. And then they told me that it was above middle school was what was outsourced to catapult. Is that correct or am I misunderstanding? I'm that's right. It's, it's backwards, right? So the the six through twelve is still CPS, which is called Quest. The K through five is Catapult. So maybe they said it backwards, or you or heard, it, heard, it, heard it backwards, and it is so confusing. It's right. two schools in one. K through five is Catapult. Six through twelve is Quest, which is CPS. And it it took me a long time. Just I'm it, finally it, it's taken a couple months to figure this out. And then you have another catapult place high roads which is down the way I won't even get into that but k through five catapult six through twelve quest which is cps okay because they had told me I had 36 students on the catapult side the max of 36 students i don't know what they have today okay and that these students come from all around columbia they're not just in columbia and, and from what from what I understand, that's correct, and that's where that's why I asked the question. And, and you may not know because you're not on the catapult side. Where do these kiddos come from that are going to this uh, catapult core focus side? So that and again, if I had catapult and core fo uh, CPS here, it would make it a lot easier, and we could an get the answers to the questions. Okay. Thank you. So um, the. So I have many questions, but I'll just stick with a couple right now. Um, Floor's yours. Go for no, it. No, and I'm glad they no longer use the seclusion room, so let's start there. Because <laughs> uh, I was not happy to hear about those either. But when they use the seclusion rooms, how did they transport the children? And you're saying these were only element, these were not the K through 5 going into the seclusion rooms. They were the above 6th grade, correct? K through five, and then there are older students um, also that go to the school, um, particularly the kiddos with autism. So mainly the K through five is what I saw, but there were other students. Put into a seclusion room. Yes. And how were they transported to the seclusion room? It was explained to us that Catapult uses, um, for their safety holds, it's called Handle Their Care. Mm -hmm. um, their arms, the ones that I witnessed, their arms are brought back behind them and they are pulled backwards, um, sometimes with their feet off the floor, sometimes with them on the floor. 
and taken into the rooms. And do we know if there were any hotline calls on this school by any of the parents? I'm unaware of that. Is that any information that's um, I, I available? So. I believe so, yes. Uh, there, are, there are some. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's, that's for now. That's, those are my questions. Thank you. Representative, can I, I just want to ask one quick question, and it could be to Representative Bailey or to Ms. Jolly. And, and because it, I don't know where the students went that came to Representative uh, Barringer's office. But there is another similar school in Columbia, right? A uh, catapult? Yes. It is a standalone school, and it is called High Road. Right, but they don't have any of these problems there, correct? Have there been any reported problems at High Road? I'm not aware if there have been. Okay, and it also is just for special needs kids, correct? Yes, ma'am. And it's from 5 to 21. Obviously, you know I have a problem with that, but... <laughs> I'm not sure of the ages at, at High Road. Okay, if I said that there are reports and quotes from them saying that they have kids from 5 to 21, would you... Have, have a reason to disagree with that. No. Okay, and they have about 25 kids there with 17 member staff. Is that a similar uh, ratio that you all have? The cat, um, catapult? Uh, yes. What were the numbers you gave again? I'm sorry. 25 kids, 17 staff members. So a little bit, one point, oh, one and a half kids per staff person. I don't know that I've seen 17 staff. Not, I'm, I'm asking for your ratio, not that you have 17 staff. I'm not sure the numbers of students either in catapults. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry, Dad. I mean, Representative Bay. <laughs> uh, there, again, there's so much information, so many layers to this, and I had forgotten. There is, so technically, and I don't even know if you know this, I, I have the document somewhere in all of this, but technically, CORE has no students enrolled on their CPS enrollment page. The students technically are enrolled in their home schools in CPS. And that, and that is, again, we, it's very confusing. So technically, there are no students at CORE, Catapult, for lack of a better, but, but there are. But on the enrollment page, these kids at Core Focus are on, enrolled at their home school within CPS. It's Reverend very confusing. Bailey, is that any, I mean, I'm just trying to get some clarity so that we can kind of all understand that. So if a child is in juvenile detention and they are in school in the juvenile detention, they are still on their home school's um, records. They are just I guess you quote, can, you quote unquote loan to them. Correct. Because yes. CPS is paying Catapult out of their funding for the students to go to Catapult. Yeah, so the, so they won't show up at CORE because they are still students at CPS because it appears that High Road has students from several districts. They stay remained in their own school district. They are just being educated at another building. It's, and I don't know about your school districts, Representative Barry and I kind of talk. We used to have a, 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 a school for pregnant women. So you stay enrolled at your high school. Uh, that's how old I am. Um, when you start showing, you you got to go. Um, but you are at the pregnant child woman school, um, but your enrollment and everything stays there. It's just the financial resources go to the school during the time that you're there. I just wanted to clarify that because that's why they would not show up. And then, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Anything that we've missed? I mean, we appreciate you being here because um, we know you work there and um, You've been there long enough to see the transition um, from the Quest CPS, and now the, the younger ones have been moved to this catapult. And um, we've seen the rooms, um, they got caught because the photos were released and now they don't do that anymore. But there's an, uh, obviously why we're here tonight, and I have many questions of now um, fake under IDA and so many other questions. Is there anything else that you think we should know? Because obviously this is a large onion that we're trying to um, peel off. Um, do you have anything else? And again, I appreciate you being here. It takes a lot of courage. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
I think the only other thing I would add is that I've let as many people know that I can within the yeah. district of my concerns with. Yeah, this wasn't your first stop. You you told others. Yeah, of course. And so um, again, we are the we are the last stop here. So I appreciate you. Thank you for being so patient, Representative Baby. Just one more quick question, because you've been there. I, I just got a note. I got a notice because it it really bothers me as I'm digging deeper and they're not having these problems at a whole nother school that's just like that and I don't want to I don't want to say that this is the reason but I need to know the racial makeup of the children in this program I need to know are these children of color are these uh forms I, I, I gotta know because um I, I gotta we have to figure out why are you at, they able to catapult is not a new company they've been operating in Boone County in Columbia a whole nother school with other children and i'm not saying this is the reason but they're not doing this over there but they're doing this to the kids that are definitely coming coming from the city of columbia because I'll, I'll tell you the high road school has more than just columbia kids um it has kids from other it even has kids from like ashland and some smaller towns so i i need you to if you could tell us what do these children look like the breakdown on our ethnic backgrounds. The ethnic backgrounds of the children. Do we all walks of life or are we catering to one? Um, there, there's a, a good mixture of different culture backgrounds. Okay. I, I don't know the exact numbers. Okay, what about your <laughs> quest program? There, there's a fair amount of um, different backgrounds. Okay, could you get Representative uh, Beatty the breakdown? Not today, you can send her that information later. I'm sure I could. Um, thank you. Chair Anderson, do you have a question? Yes, um, uh, thank you very much for, for being here and answering these questions. And this is kind of a new um, story. I mean, this I, I, I'm just appalled when I, when I first heard about it. But I just wanted to go back on some of the things that you said, because you had mentioned that on these seclusion rooms, that this was not a procedure that was brought to your attention beforehand. It was just they had them and then the teachers were supposed to use them or the staff was supposed to use them and the parents were not notified. As far as Quest being aware, um, we understood that High Road did utilize, kind of pulled that High Road did utilize the seclusion rooms. We knew they were coming. Um, didn't exactly know what they would look like, um, how often they'd be used. We, we assumed they'd be used for just safety concerns, but um, a little unprepared for the things that were happening at the front door with the searches. And, and as far as the parents, I, I don't know how they were notified or if they were. As I say, so they were not notified beforehand that this is our standard procedure and your child will be put in these rooms or your child had been put into these rooms, even, you know, you mentioned that some of them had been in there multiple times. Were, do you know if the parents were notified that their children were being put in these rooms? I'm not, I, I don't know if the parents were notified or not. So I assume that the parents now know what's going on. Did they express any concern to any of the staff that you know of? I'm not aware of the catapult side and if there was complaints. Um, do you know if this was brought to the attention of the school board by these parents? Yes. And I assume that the parents were not, did not approve of this? I haven't talked to any of the parents directly, um, just hearing different things that there were parents that weren't happy, but I wasn't there firsthand to hear that. And you did say that they did bring it to the attention of the school board. That's my understanding, yes. Do you know what the school board's reaction was? I was not there, so I do not know. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I would like to go on record. I, I mean, I don't know if they will come forward or if they know what's going on, but if there are any parents out there, I'd like to go on record that they need to reach out to me. I'd like to hear their story and hear their situation if they have one. So if you know of anybody, can you please have them contact my office? I would like to speak with the parents as well. Go ahead. One other thing, once again, these were parents in my office today. And so what they did say to me, which I, this is something I was unaware of as well, because 
I have a child on the spectrum, and when you're autistic, you can't handle sensory overload. So the children actually make their own box that's their box. So when they can't handle it, when they're, you know, they're having a fit, that they actually go to their own box, which I've never heard of that before because I'm not familiar with it. So that must be separate from these seclusion rooms, correct? Because this does not sound anything like what they described to me. Because that's what they said. They said they actually decorate their box and they know that when they're gonna have a meltdown from sensory overload as an autistic child, they are safe so they can get safe. And then, so as, as a teacher, I'm just saying, is that? I can answer from the Quest side. Okay. Um, we very much um, worked very hard to work with our students so they would be able to self-regulate when they were um, dysregulated. Um, we had toolboxes for all of the students. Um, the elementary side, every student um, had their own box. Uh, we had. I'm sorry. Like, what kind of box did you call that? Um, a toolbox. Toolbox. Tool okay. Shoe boxes. They had tools mm -hmm. that worked for them. That we found um, different fidgets or squishies, whatever worked for them. And so we worked really hard. Um, one of the classrooms, they they just had. Um, just a little table that had a blanket over it that our younger students could go under it. They could use their boxes of different. Um, so we we did that with our younger students and with some of the older ones, not so much with a hiding spot, but a place they could go. A safe you place. created a house. safe fort. Safe yeah, that's what we did. Yes, All right. of us as children built a fort at one time or another. At least I hope you did. I yes. Think. Oh yes, we do. I, I I'm aware of that. Okay, are there any more questions for this witness? Real quick. We, we've asked if they stopped, but is Catapult still in the building? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, yeah, I've spoke with their lobbyists. They're still in this building, too. Okay, so no more questions for this witness. Now, I would like to say thank you. Okay. It's very encouraging to see someone. I mean, the first thing I heard was you say that you still work for CPS. Yes, sir. And you have taken a major risk by coming up here and speaking out for these students that do not have a voice. I believe I did. You're the kind of teacher I needed. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your courage. Thank you most of all for not caring about what's going to happen to you, for caring about those students and those. They're helpless. And with, without you, they're really helpless. Thank you for being there. Thank you. Now, I understand we have another witness, so at this time I'd like to ask another witness to come forward. Can I get some water real quick? You may. Thank you. Are there any other witnesses that would like to speak today? It's just informational purposes only, so if there's anyone in here that has any experiences of any of this, please feel free to speak up. Just fill out that witness form. Yeah. Please, just fill the witness form out and then sign the bottom of it and put it in the box. You're more than welcome to testify for informational purposes only. If you would just start by introducing yourself, who you are, and what you, organization, or okay. if you're just a concerned citizen. Okay, my name is Angela Jasper. I live in Columbia, Missouri. Um, I am one of the people that um, got to tour the building um, on September 4th. I'm also a previous employee of Columbia Public School District. I was the behavior specialist for the special education department, um, and so I'm very familiar with CPS in general. Yes, the evening. Okay, so you've heard, you've heard a lot of testimony here today then, so. Yes. I mean, I don't want to, I, if possible, just real fast, I'm going to let you do an opening statement. And, and what I'm going to ask on that is, is you've heard a lot of these questions. Uh -huh. Just to save some time and breath. I mean, do you want to answer any of them that maybe were misspoke on or just not answered to the fullest? Maybe I can just um, clarify some a little bit because I did work at the district level and I was a part of the decisions as when um, some of the IEP teams uh, when a kiddo would get moved out to that um, setting. Um, we have 26 elementary schools, and so my job was to be involved with the highest um, risk behavioral kiddos in the elementary schools. Um, and so there were times where the general education schools would feel that they no longer 
could provide resources um, and keep the kiddos safe, and keep the teachers safe, keep the child themselves safe, and so the team would then meet. Um, you know, there's steps that are supposed to be gone through as far as um, getting an FBA, doing all of these things, um, but if then the IEP team decided that the least restrictive placement was that separate school, then that is where that kiddo would go. So yes, right now there is a school for kids with only IEPs, um, and then there's also that off-site school that's the same, only with IEPs. Okay, well, you heard me ask a question. I, I, I did not get the answer because we don't know. Okay. Certification. For which? Catapult. Um, I think that's, I, I know that's something we've been asking for, but they will not release that. What I, what I do know is that Catapult is a national organization. Um, if you look on their website, they require that you have a certified behavior analyst. Um, and um, I, I just let my certification go, but I was a licensed and certificate, certified behavior analyst. You can look up both um, Aaron O'Neill and Jess Miller on our licensure site, and neither of them pull up. So I do not know of a behavior analyst that is on site. Um, which is, uh, it's against their own rules, so. That's where I was going. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Representative Bailey, you may continue. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> are you a mandated reporter? Yes, ma'am. Did you report um, this to the Division of Family Services or, or, or make attempts to? Yes, ma'am, when I received the pictures, yes, ma'am. When you received what? The pictures. The pictures, mm -hmm. okay. Um, Tell us about the attempts and, and kind of how that all worked out. Well, I started by making a phone call okay. and um, letting them know that I had pictures and um, the statements that I was told about the kids crying within the room, asking to be let out, urine smell in the room. I let them know all of these things, and it was told to me that that was not enough to continue an investigation. Um, so I said, okay. Um, and then I uh, worked with a colleague and she said, let's go up to the office. Maybe they didn't quite understand what you meant. And so we tried again to report this. Um, again, I had pictures. I had a person from the inside telling me this is what's happening. I did not, not, I did not have specific kids' names. Um, many reasons for that. That would have been a HIPAA violation for that person inside to tell me those things. But I did know the location. I did know that we were talking about adults and kids. Um, they had me write a statement and then they sent me on and nothing was ever investigated. Did they, so it wasn't reported back to uh, CPS that? Not that I know of. And so um, do you know if any of the administration at CPS knew about these rooms? Did they come and visit? Did they see and smell the urine? Um, that kind of thing before the photos were leaked? Uh, do you know, I mean? Not to my knowledge. Um, I, I do not believe, I knew that they knew they were coming, the seclusion rooms were coming. Um, that was a part of the deal. That was something everybody was kind of looking forward to and bringing in Catapult. Okay. Um, it was one of the reasons I left when those conversations started. But I don't okay. think they saw them, no. Gotcha. So it's been stated by uh, Board President Helen Wade and um, Michelle Momstark, the Communications Director, that the rooms were not used in the unfinished states. Um, did you say anything that indicated that the rooms were being used in the unfinished state? Yes, ma'am. Um, so on September 4th, when we took the tour, uh, both the two rooms that Angela earlier spoke of that were the, like, out in the open seclusion rooms and the closet room. Next to each of the rooms, there was um, a clipboard with data sheets, and there were login, logout times. And so it would have students' initials, login time, logout, and then they had an opportunity to circle why the kid went in. Um, and so down the list, there was the last entry was September 4th, but then there were multiple pages before mm -hmm. kids and on dates prior to that on both the closet room and the other two uh, out in the open solutions. I was told also that they were not used in this unfinished state. So um, that's that's interesting. Um, 
And, and when did you leave? What, like around? I literally had to sit back there and count. Um, so I worked there from 2016 to 2017 school year, and then 2000, 2017, 2018 school year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you took you you took the um, tour around September 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's when you saw the, September 4th. September 4th. Yeah. yeah. And that's when you saw the logs, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So it and the, what's hard about this is just putting all the time together. Um, so the D, DFS never did anything, as far as I know. And so I guess you know everybody's asking, well, how does this get to? I've been asked this question so many times. How does this get to you, and why are you doing this? Um, and kind of, so kind of what we've heard tonight is everybody did this. Mm -hmm. um, and um, again, I appreciate you being here to to kind of fill in the gaps and um, help us all understand what, what's been going on. You know, that they say that they're not being used right now. Okay. Um, is there any other, any uh, anything we're missing? I, and I think you were, you know, I, it was hard to understand what focus was and catapult mm -hmm. and the two in one and this, this. Is there anything else I guess we should understand? Um, and high roads, do you know anything about high roads? Mm -hmm. There is there seclusion rooms there? Are they being utilized? They are, mm -hmm. okay. They are being utilized. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so that was another option when you looked at the restrictiveness, uh, least restrictive spectrum um, quest, and then you would talk about high road as the most restrictive. But yes, there are seclusion rooms there. Because we've mainly focused on the, the core focus, I guess, because this onion is so big. Um, does high roads, do they, because what I was told was, oh no, Catapult follows CPS policy, which means no seclusion unless it's for danger to the kiddo or to anybody else. Does high roads, do you know, do they follow that same policy and do they follow it or they do they use it for discipline action as well? I do not, I do not know what the policy states and I have limited experience there, but I will tell you um, that I reported something that I saw there to Jess Miller. So like the very limited experience that I saw was a restrained hold where a kiddo was kind of thrown over somebody's arm and taken into the seclusion room. So um, I just, um, yeah. So Jess Miller, she's the program director of Catapult? She's the program director right now at the Focus program. Oh. I think she had a different role when she worked over at High Road. Okay. She, was, she was getting her BCBA, but I, okay. I guess I didn't have to. And she found no problem with that. She did. She told me that that was inappropriate, it wasn't an appropriate hold, and that she would look into it. Okay. And did anything ever come from that? Not that I'm aware of. I was very clear with my supervisors that I would work really, really hard for none of my children to go there. None of the children on my caseload do go there. It wouldn't happen. To you, high road, to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, as far as. Um, the leadership and the school board and the um, administration mm -hmm. had you expressed any obviously issues that you had with with the, the practice and and what was their response um yes we talked to the after the tour um i spoke at the school board meeting um i was told that basically that i was lying and that they weren't being used and that this was a stunt um and then I had other meetings with Dr. Stiebelman and where I wanted to make sure he was aware and had all of the information and offered to kind of work alongside him and talk about, you know, what preventative strategies can happen and that didn't really go anywhere. Um, I also met with the director of special education, my former boss, and I'm doing this as an outside person now. I, I try many times within the district to kind of work on some of these practices and the culture of CPS in general and didn't get anywhere, um, and so I'm a part of a, a group called Faith Voices in Columbia right now, and that's who I was representing when I was on the tour, and so I thought maybe helping in that way would be helpful, but, you know, eventually it's going to be helpful, so. and I think, um, like Miss Jasper, you being here, having courage um, when everybody else has, has pushed you aside, I think... Um, you know, I respect you a lot, and I thank you a lot. Is there any any other questions? So you're a past employee of DP, uh, of CPS, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, how long were you employed with CPS? I stayed for, for two years. For two years? Mm -hmm. uh, reason for leaving, or can you share? Um, I was not okay being involved with uneth what I felt were unethical practices. That's what I wanted to hear. So currently, right now, you feel that this, the way the program is being utilized is 
unethical for children. I feel like the whole special education department is unethical for children. Okay. Thank you. I, I have a question. Go ahead. Go um, th thank you very much for being here and sharing your testimony. Um, I just wanted to kind of go back and clarify something that you'd mentioned about, I think it was the seclusion rooms. You're talking about urine-soaked mm -hmm. rooms. Were, were they all that way, or was it just one particular room? It was that closet room. Just the closet room? <laughs> so room 10? Room 10. Is what I reported on, yes. Did now, you, I'm not saying that um, that other ones didn't, but that's the one that I Did you witness on. that, or was that something that you were told? It was something that I was told. Do you know if anybody else reported it? Um, I know that um, a little bit about the reporting policy in CPS. Um, you are actually not allowed to report as a as a mandated reporter until you tell your supervisor. And so that stopped a lot of teachers, um, which is why they reached out to me. But does it sound like a very sanitary place sanitary. for a child? Um, how long was it in that kind of condition? I do not know. Even though you know that somebody was trying to report it and they didn't change it or? I, from what I've been told after the tour went through, um, that room, they had said they were going to use it as like a calm down room or something like that. The door had been taken off. Um, but it still smelled like urine. I don't know if it smelled like urine before. I reported based on reports that I got before I went on my tour. Do you have an estimate how long you think it may have been used while it was in that condition? Um, I mean, so the school started August 15th. I went on the tour September 4th, and I know that the logs that I saw were thick. I mean, I mean, I would guess since the beginning of the year. I know that that room specifically was used in the, in the first day of school. Yeah. I know a dog kennel will be shut down for less than that, and these are our children. I mean, that's pretty sad if that's the case. So that's disturbing, actually. So I just, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we have one more question here, and then we still have one witness left. And the, I'd like to let the committee know that we have about 10 minutes left here, and we still have one more witness to listen to. And I, he's been sitting there quietly, patiently, and he seems like one of them that might actually be able to bring some to light here. I'm hoping he can shed some light to this. So if we could just finish up our questioning here. Uh, Maringer, you may ask the last question. Oh, well, thank you. Um, one of the other things that was stated to me today, mm -hmm. so I just wanted you to verify this, sure. I was told that the Columbia Public Schools has the lowest IEPs in the entire state of Missouri for a public school. Is that true? I have no idea. Okay, that's what, they, that's what these parents have told me. Interesting. A parent would not. I, 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 I'm wondering if your your parents came from the um, standalone site or the actual catapult site. Um, I, I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, sorry. No, that's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end the questioning for this witness. Again, too, I thank you for your time coming up here and the courage that you take, and thank you for what you have done for those children. And are you still continuing to work in the education system in the state? I actually work um, at a church and am an advocate at IP meetings for parents that just need that person. Well, please don't ever stop. We need teachers like yourselves. I will. Thank you. Gentlemen, you may come up. Please fill out a witness form and sign the bottom of that, please. I apologize for my manner. Um, I didn't expect to it's be okay. uh, actually speaking today. So um, I'm Chad McLaren. I am one of the executive board members for Race Matters Friends, one of the groups who's advocating on behalf of the parents. So there's a lot of information between Como SEPTA, which is a special education PTA group, and our group that we've worked in. We've been dealing with uh, CPS for easily a year now. Are they easy to deal with? Negative. They are terrible. Um, one, of the, one of the more one of the reasons got us invested in the first place is there was a, a family that came to us and they had a 14-year-old daughter who was arrested, taken to juvenile, over a fight that she was not involved in. They had misidentified this student and had sent her to juvenile without notifying the parents beforehand. And when all said and done, didn't even have the gall to apologize for having wrongfully identified this student. Um, so in the process of trying to talk through, you know, initially we entered into um, kind of a cooperative agreement or cooperative efforts with these administrators and just found them basically to be, you know, they do the right things to say, but they're not following their own policies. They're not, they're, they're, they're not really doing any favors to these kids. I think that's rampant throughout the CPS system, from the principals at least, uh, definitely the superintendent, 
but the superintendent doesn't directly um, oversee. I think a lot of times it's just is border on negligence by not paying attention to some of these issues. Uh, Como SEPTA has been raising these special ed treatments for years. Uh, they've gotten more aggressive. Uh, Race Fighters Friends stepped in. We did the same thing in part because we also saw racial disparities. You're asking about what was the makeup of the students who were put into these um, environments. I uh, want an answer to that question. Too. If, if there was a definite discrepancy. I, I, I hesitate to give you an exact number, but I can tell you if you go to cpsk12.org and go to their balanced scorecard, it's right there, and you can see like, the percentages of they have it broken down to all students and black students. So, I mean, even that by itself is a little misleading just because mm -hmm. of the way statistics work. You know, you would compare them against like maybe black, white, and everything else, not trying to say you can inflate the black. And so, when you roll it into all, that's kind of giving you a false narrative. Um, but simple things like trying to look at how many black students we have in our population or what percentage of the population they don't put on on that public space is kind of hidden. So they kind of give you just enough window dressing, but not really enough to, to go in that without trying to um, find a way to get that information for you directly. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't have like a lot of things pre prepared. I'm just, like I said, I've been active in this for like the last year. Um, hey, well, I'd like to invite you to come to my office one day and explain to me what your organization does and you know the support and things that you do through the community just so I can get to know a little bit more. I actually think I've seen you in a couple other committee hearings that I belong on, so I appreciate your time coming up here today. Like you said, you weren't going to plan on testifying, but I stepped up and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, if there's any questions you would have for our organization, I would just like to do that on record. I can't answer them right now, but I can certainly uh, take that back. Are there right. any questions for this witness? Representative Bailey? Not a question, but a comment. Um, I've been working with your organization through this investigation, and I appreciate you greatly. You've given me, um, you guys did a lot of um, background and um, working with Tracy. Um, appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you for what you do, as well as being an advocate for these kids. Appreciate it. So thank you for your time today. Make sure you fill out that witness form, please, and sign the bottom. Any more questions for any witnesses? Any more comments? Seeing none. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a closing statement myself. And the first thing I'd like to say is I know that this committee hearing right now seems a little one-sided. I know the media is here, and it can actually be portrayed as one-sided. CPS was invited. CPS is not here. It looks like I will be sending CPS another letter. I will speak to the Speaker of the House and see if we can have another hold another hearing on this. I think we just... Uh, went a little further than I ever thought it was going to go. I have some unanswered questions now, and I would like to talk with them myself. I'm not sure the questions they'll be able to answer, but I would like to say thank you for the time that you've taken, for the witnesses to come up here, especially for the two of you. Um, Ma'am, you coming up here, testifying and being a teacher, still working for them, goes a long way. It shows you dedication, again, to them students, to their parents and to the education of this state, to the future of the children in this state. Thank you for that. And to the media, if you'd like, I will let you know when I set up a next hearing. All you have to do is notify my office, let my chief of staff dual know, and we'd be glad to notify you when it comes. And again, thank you for everybody's diligence today. Thank you for your time and your comments. This is not over. We will look a little bit further into this and see where it goes. So thank you again for your time. This will end the hearing this evening for Regulatory Oversight and Reform Committee. Thank you.